<laughs> hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Welcome to the keynote speech of the Intervene, Interrupt, Rethinking Art as Social you Practice see, You guys ought to move the table over there because you'll never see or the festival. Screen. We never really knew what to call it in or our grant, so we always called it both. I am so pleased to present the Executive Vice Chancellor of UC Santa Cruz, Dr. David Klieger, tonight. He's from Rutgers University and is secretly a Flexus artist. And he is going to introduce Helen and Newton Mayor Harrison. So could you please give it up for the EVC? I know Beth only wants to think of me as from Rutgers, but that was my start. Then I went to Cornell from there. So. <laughs> but my true love is Rutgers and Santa Cruz. Good evening, and thank you, Beth, for inviting me. I'm really pleased to be able to introduce professors Newton Harrison and Helen Mayer Harrison. As you know, the Harrisons are pioneers in what's become known as eco, the eco-art movement. For over 30 years, they've been using their work to increase international awareness of the importance of biodiversity and sustainable communities, and it's a pleasure to welcome them to our campus. Their work together began in about 1969, with a global map of endangered species that was created for an exhibition called Fur and Feathers at the Museum of Crafts in New York City. This led to a decision that all their future work would focus on supporting ecosystems in some way. For example, in the early 70s, the Harrison's work was about urban farming. They constructed fish farms, portable orchards, pastures in such unlikely places, as the Hayward Gallery in London, the New National Gallery in Berlin, and the Houston Museum of Contemporary Art. Perhaps their best known work from those early days is the Lagoon Cycle, which was a 360 foot long photo mural that was acquired by the Pompidou Center in Paris after exhibitions at Cornell University's Johnson Museum, my other connection, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and La Vallée in Paris. The Harrison's work has gained great recognition since that time. In 2001, with grants from the European Union and the German government, they created Peninsula Europe, the high ground, bringing forth a new state of mind, which aims to help people see the peninsula of Europe as a single physical entity. More recently, at the Santa Fe Institute of Fine Arts, the Harrisons produced a 4,000 square foot installation, the Santa Fe Watershed, Lessons from the Genius of Place which envisions the restoration of both the Santa Fe River and the arroyos which lead to it. Their ideas have become enacted in the ground and adopted into the Santa Fe City Plan. The Harrisons have also worked on global warming and somehow are finding the time to be involved in creating three large works in Europe, Britain, and Taiwan that address the issue of what will happen when the oceans rise and as a result, large numbers of people are forced to relocate. In addition to these works, the other exhibitions and large-scale installations created by the Harrisons are far too numerous to list uh, uh, in the time that we have, but I'll just mention a few highlights. You may be interested to know that the Harrisons have presented their work at two Venice Biennales and two Sao Paulo Biennales at the Museum of Modern Art in Chicago, San Francisco, Bonn, Germany, and Toulouse, France, and at the Museum of the Revolution uh, in Zagreb, Croatia. Their work took second prize at the Nagoyan Biennale in 1991 in Japan, and they received the 2002 Grunewald Award for the most important work of the year for the Dutch landscape. As you can imagine, given all of this work and their history of involvement in eco-art, many people have written extensively about the Harrison's work. They're acknowledged as having led the way to the area of activists, in, in an area of activist art that combines creation of art with a close collaboration with the scientific community and urban planners. The Harrison's commitment to work in the public interest also extends beyond art. Both Newton and Helen have chaired the Department of Visual Arts at UC San Diego, and they served on committees that were involved in decisions about the architecture and master planning for UCSD. Newton served for two years as the first policy panel chairman for the National Endowment of the Arts, reviewing and clarifying national art policy, and Helen spent five years on the city of San Diego's Art and Public Places Committee. We at UCSC have a long history of sharing the Harrison's commitment to the environment 
and to the issues of sustainability through many of our active, ac academic programs, such as the Institute for Marine Sciences and projects like the Center for Agroecology and Sustainable Food Systems, and through the involvement of our students, staff, and faculty in creating a greener campus. Among other achievements, we are, for instance, the sixth biggest campus producer, a purchaser of green power in the United States. So given this mutual um, commitment to sustain sustainability, I'm very pleased to introduce two fellow travelers in the efforts to protect our planet. Please join in me in welcoming Newton Harrison and Helen Mayer Harrison. I do tell the story. Can I tell the applause story from Yugoslavia? Wow. Thank you. Hi. It happened. We were working on the pit mines in um, former Yugoslavia. No, I mean in, in uh, uh, Prague, the Czech Republic, in Prague. Prague. <laughs> Helen corrects me all the time. Except I would be annoyed, except she's right all the time. I, we've got 50 years into this. Um, so anyway, there's a, an august audience, and a very serious faces are there. And Helen and me, we get up and talk. Before we could say a word, this very solid gentleman stomps up to the, the, the podium. Um, we know something important is going to happen. It does. He opens these boxes. He lifts very heavy metals out of these boxes. And he puts a medal on Helen, and he puts a medal on me. And um, this is our first medal in our whole lives. In fact, our only medal. And uh, um, so um, it struck me as so odd that the Dada properties of my character came forth. And I said, you have applauded us, and you have given us a medal, and we haven't said a thing. Now. Supposing you don't like what we've said, do we have to give you back the medal and give you back the applause? Being in a, a, a country of that sort that had, that had been so repressed, there was no humor in the audience whatsoever. People began to look to each other and think about this. <laughs> and uh, so then we began. So, so let us begin. This, what we're going to be talking about is um, the culture of extraction, OK? What, it ha what happens when you extract a rainforest? And what would you want to do about it? What happens when you extract the meadow life of Europe and the whole ecosystem there? And what might you do about it? What happens if you um, uh, um, extract the whole high ground forest of the peninsula of Europe so it doesn't sequester water anymore, purify water, just grows pine trees? What happens and what would you want to do about it? And now that we can take for granted that the waters are rising, how would one move up gracefully? How would one get past business as usual? What kind of design has to go into that? What kind of thinking? What kind of daring? My, are, are people not hearing me? Yeah, it's hard to hear you in the back. You mean I said all that and nobody heard me? <laughs> hey, thank you, sorry. Wow, OK. I, uh, um, should we start it? Yeah, let me, let's, let me see if this one works. Yeah, OK, let, let's begin. Let's, the, we'll <laughs> begin with the, uh, they, they didn't answer. Yeah, you Are we in the back? OK. okay. Good. Um, we'll begin with a, a seven-minute a, a seven um, video uh, called The Serpentine Lattice. Um, go ahead. Let's start it. Yeah. Uh, it's really about the Pacific Northwest. And the serpentine lattice is the serpentining form of the great Pacific Northwest from uh, Northern California to Yakutat Bay, and the lattice-like form of the, uh, all the little rivers that come uh, down from the uh, trees, from the uh, mountains there. And yeah, Hello. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, Let's that's what I it. was afraid of. <laughs> but uh, the serpentine and the, uh, the lattice and the serpentine are very important. Okay. And they had a very interesting effect. After you see it, we want to tell you a story about it. And about Al Gore. <laughs> and President Clinton. Clinton. Turn down the lights. North America's last great temperate rainforest is dying. No, Everybody knows this. No, I'm fine. I'm standing now. 